Welcome to the new section, Aggregation. In this section, we will learn executing stats and terms aggregation. We will also take a look at executing significant terms, range, histogram, and date histogram aggregation. Then we will see executing filter and filters aggregations. We will also execute global, geo distance, children, nested, top hit, and matrix stats aggregation. Lastly, we will see executing geo bound and geo centroid aggregation. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with executing stats and terms aggregation. In this video, we're going to take a look at executing an aggregation, stats aggregation, terms aggregation, and significant terms aggregation. First, you will need an up and running Elasticsearch installation. To execute curl via a command line, you need to install curl for your operating system. To correctly execute the command, we need an index populated with the script populate underscore aggregations.sh available in the online code. We run this script using the curl command. For executing an aggregation, first we want to compute the top 10 tags by name. This can be obtained by executing this query with aggregations from the command line. In this case, we've used a match all query plus a term aggregation used to count terms. This is the output returned by Elasticsearch. The results are not returned because we have fixed the result size to 10. The aggregation result is contained in the aggregation field. Each type of aggregation has its own result format. Every search can return an aggregation calculation computed on the query results. The aggregation phase is an additional step in query post processing, as for example, the highlighting. To activate the aggregation phase, an aggregation must be defined using the AGS or aggregations keyword. There are several types of aggregation that can be used in Elasticsearch. The aggregations are the basis for real-time analytics. They allow us to execute counting, histogram, range aggregation, statistics, and geodistance aggregation. There are the examples of graphs generated by histogram aggregations. The aggregations are always executed on search hits. They are usually computed in a map or reduce way. The map step is distributed in shards, while the reduce step is done in the called node. During aggregation computation, a lot of data should be kept in memory, and it can therefore be very memory intensive. For example, when executing a term aggregation, it requires that all the unique terms in the field that are used for aggregating are kept in memory. Executing this operation on millions of documents requires perhaps storing a large number of values in memory. Its main difference from the old facet framework is the possibility to execute the analytics with several nesting levels of sub-aggregations. Aggregations keep information of which documents go into an aggregation bucket, and an aggregation output can be the input of the next aggregation. Now let's check the generic forms for aggregation. This is generic form for an aggregation. The aggregation nesting allows for covering very advanced scenarios in executing analytics, such as aggregating data by country, by region, and by person's ages, where age groups are ordered in descending order. There are no more limits in mastering analytics. The main difference between the previous facet system and the aggregation framework is shown in this. There are four kinds of aggregators that can be used in Elasticsearch 5.x. First are bucketing aggregators. These produce buckets, where a bucket has an associated value and a set of documents. A document can end up in multiple buckets if the document has multiple values for the field being aggregated on. If a bucket aggregator has one or more downstream, that is, child aggregators, these are run on each generated bucket. Second are metric aggregators. These receive a set of documents as input and produce statistical results computed for the specified field. The output of metric aggregators does not include any information linked to individual documents, just the statistical data. Third are matrix aggregators. These operate on multiple fields and produce a matrix result based on the values extracted from the requested document fields. Fourth are pipeline aggregators. These aggregate the output of other aggregations and their associated metrics. Generally, the order of buckets depends on the bucket aggregator used for example, using the terms aggregator, the buckets are, by default, ordered by count. 
the aggregation framework allows to order by sub-aggregation metrics. Now we move to stats aggregations. The most commonly used metric aggregations are stats aggregations. They are generally used as a terminal aggregation step to compute values to be used directly or for sorting. For executing a stats aggregation, we calculate all statistics values of a matched query on the age field. The rest call is this. This is the result of the rest call. In the answer, under the aggregations field, we have the statistical results of our aggregation under the defined field, age stats. After the search phase, if any aggregations are defined, they are computed. In this case, we have request an extended stats aggregation labeled age stats, which computes a lot of statistical indicators. These are the available metric aggregators. First aggregator is min, which computes the minimum value for a group of buckets. Second is max, which computes the maximum value for a group of buckets. Third is average, which computes the average value for a group of buckets. Next is sum, which computes the sum of all the buckets. Then value count, this computes the count of values in the bucket. And then stats, which computes all the base metrics such as the min, max, average, count and sum. Next is extended stats. This computes the stats metric plus variance, standard deviation and sum of squares. After that percentile, which computes the percentiles of some values. After percentile is percentile ranks, which computes the rank of values that hit a percentile range. Next is cardinality, which computes an approximate count of distinct values in a field. Then geo bounds, which computes the maximum geo bounds in the documents where geo points are. Last is geo centroid, which computes the centroid in the document where geo points are. Every metric requires different computational needs, so it's good practice to limit the indicators only to required ones, so as not to waste CPU, memory and performance. The syntax of all the metric aggregations has the same pattern independently of the level of nesting in the aggregation DSL. They follow these patterns. Now we start with executing term aggregation. The rest call for calculating the top 10 tags of all the documents is this. In this example, we need to match all the items, so the match all query is used. This result is returned by Elasticsearch. The aggregation result is composed from several buckets with these terms. Key, the term used to populate the bucket. Dot count, the number of results with the key term. These parameters are supported by the terms aggregation. First is field, which is the field to be used to extract the faucet data. The field data can be a single string or a list of fields, that is field 1, field 2 and so on. Second is size, which controls the number of term values to be returned. Third is min.count is optional, which returns terms that have at least a minimum number of documents. Next is include is optional, which defines the valid value to be aggregated via regular expression. This is evaluated before the exclude parameter. The regular expressions are controlled by the flags parameter. After include is exclude is optional, which removes from the results the terms that are contained in the exclude list. The regular expressions are controlled by the flags parameter. Last is order, which controls how to calculate the top n bucket values to be returned. The order parameter can be one of these types. First is underscore count, returns the aggregation values ordered by count, then underscore term returns the aggregation values ordered by term. This is an example of sub-aggregation name. Term aggregation is very useful to represent an overview of values used for further filtering. This graph often shown as a bar chart. The significant term aggregation is an evolution of the terms aggregation in that it's able to cover several scenarios such as suggesting relevant terms related to current query text, discovering relations of terms and common patterns in text. In these scenario cases, the result must not be as simple as other aggregations. It must be computed as a variance between a foreground set generally, the query and a background, one that is a large bulk of data. For executing a significant term aggregation, this rest call calculates the significant terms tag given some tags. This output is returned by Elasticsearch. 
aggregation result is composed from several buckets with key, the term used to populate the bucket, dot count, the number of results with the key term, score, the score for this bucket, and BG count, the number of background documents that contains the key term. The execution of the aggregation is similar to the term's aggregation. Internally, two terms aggregations are computed, one related to the documents matched with the query or parent aggregation, and one based on all the documents on the knowledge base. Then, the two results data sets are scored to compute the significant results. Due to the large cardinality of terms queries and the cost of a significant relevance computation, this kind of aggregation is very CPU intensive. The significant aggregation returns terms that are evaluated as significant for the current query. To compare the results of significant terms aggregation with the plain terms aggregation, we execute the same aggregation with the terms one as. This is the result returned. 